Krishna. Hare Krishna. Here we are. Bhaktivedanta Mala. One of the holiest tirthas in the Western world. Indeed. Shri Prabhupada has his personal rooms here. Just right up there. If you can see us. Hanuman's on the flag there. Yeah. And George Harrison donated this property to his eternal benefit and all the eternal benefit of all the Harrisons uh -huh. in his life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the sons of Hari, as Prabhupada said mm. when he wanted to get initiated. Mm. He said, you're already initiated, you are the son of Hari. And, um, <coughs> all right. 50th anniversary year and all that. Yeah, 50th anniversary year of Sri Sri Radha Gokulananda. Installation, Bhaktivedanta Manor. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, so we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, correct? Yes, Canto 3, Chapter 32, Text 3. Mm -hmm. Om, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Text 3 Such materialistic persons attracted by sense gratification and devoted to the forefathers and demigods can be elevated to the moon where they drink an extract of the Soma plant <coughs> and again return to this planet. Papa, the moon is considered one of the planets of the heavenly kingdom. One can be promoted to this planet by executing different sacrifices recommended in the Vedic literature, such as pious activities in worshipping the demigods and forefathers with rigidity, rigidity and vows. But one cannot remain there for a very long time. Life on the moon is said to last 10,000 years according to the calculation of the demigods. The demigods time is calculated in such a way that one day, 12 hours, is equal to 6 months on this planet. It is not possible to reach the moon by any material vehicle like a Sputnik. But persons who are attracted by material enjoyment can go to the moon by pious activities. In spite of being promoted to the moon, however, one has to come back to this earth again when the merits of his works and sacrifice are finished. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, text 21. Te tam bhuktva svaga lokam vishalam shine punya martya lokam vishanti. So, here we are learning that we can be elevated to the moon planet if we drink an extra of the soma plant. Not if you drink that, that's what you drink if you're there, I think. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, God. I'm All not right. sure. If you can find some Soma drink here, that's what the demigods drink. That's what, that's their kind of ambrosial nectar, you know, their liquor. Here we drink kind of, um, you know, uh, rotted potatoes oh. and apples and uh, <laughs> fermented good. sugar and hops and barley and things like that. This is a soma plant, and it's evident. You know, it's what Lord Indra drinks, and you know, mm, it's intoxicant. <clears throat> it's an intoxicant, yeah. But in, but Prabhupada says that in spite of being promoted to the moon, you have to come back when you're like, Jeepers, what is that? It's like Air Force One. You have to come back when your pious activities are exhausted. Mm. So you can't stay there. Mm. You can't stay on the moon. Well, it says um, life on the moon lasts 10,000 years according to the calculation of the demigods. And then that calculation is given as one day equals 12 hours. Uh, no, sorry, one day, rather 12 hours, not even a full day, but one day is equal to six months so a whole day is equal to one year so it's one day to one year so that means the one day uh, of the demigods is equal to one year for us so 10,000 years somebody do the maths uh, for us is how many years it'd be for the demigods which you know is 
Yeah, well, well, yeah, something. <coughs> but I was thinking how that works out because we've just been reading Krishna book recently also. And, mm-hmm. and uh, we just read the Brahma Vimoha Leela. Uh, where Lord Brahma steals the cowherd boys and it's described that Lord Brahma stole the boys and it was literally just like a second for him he was like oh maybe I should check to see you know what's happening with those cowherd boys and Krishna and that was equal to one year on earth mm-hmm. what was like a second for him so mm-hmm. this is like the planets of the demigods they're Hmm. Several, you know, different planets in the heavenly, uh, heavenly spheres. Hmm. So these are for, in one sense, you could say lesser demigods. Lord Brahma, he's at the top. So for him, a second is equal to one year, hmm. whereas for them, uh, one full day is equal to a year. So <coughs> interesting these calculations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. I can't remember the name now, we sleep a lot of the things, but there is a pastime in, God, <laughs> I can't remember, it's Krishna book or Bhagavatam. No, it's in Krishna book, where Arjuna and Krishna go. No, no, it's about the Kshatriya who was, did so much fighting and he was given benediction, you can rest, so he was sleeping oh, for a much long kunda. time, wasn't much, and then when he woke up, then you sort of like, what did he do? Then he realized. Well, Muchikunda burned um, 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 someone. Cupid. T- not Cupid. No, anyway. Anyway, the point is when he woke fool, up. Fool is realized when we open our mouths. <laughs> I'm trying to open my mouth. Isn't it? It was someone's <laughs> so when he woke up, the point is it was so many years that had gone on earth that he went back thinking, oh, okay, you know, I had a good rest. Now I'll check out my family. And he was told, sorry all your immediate family are gone and so many f- people like generations after that have gone you know so many lifetimes have gone for the earthly for the people that are on earth there's no one there for you there's nothing in me it was like whoa well i think that also happened to king indrajumna in the pastime of lord jagannath a similar type of thing happened but yeah i think it ha- has happened a few times different personalities mm you know, who managed to make it to other other spheres um, and then they realize just how much time has passed when they go back. Yeah, scary. So, well, yeah. Scary. But, you know, anyway, we've discussed this before, but you can understand it because even here on, the, you know, this planet, we live for like a hundred years, but a cat or a dog only lives for you know the equivalent of like maybe 10 to 12 I think probably 15 would be even pushing it and they say that you know it's seven years equivalent for the life of a cat or a dog and I think it's five for a horse and cow so different animals and insects they usually only live like a few days at the most and that's a whole life cycle for them so time is relative in that sense Um. Okay, uh, text four. Mm. All the planets of the materialistic persons, including all the heavenly planets, such as the moon, are vanquished when the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, goes to his bed of serpents, which is known as Anantashesh, purport. The materially attached are very eager to promote themselves to the heavenly planets, such as the moon. There are many heavenly planets to which they aspire just to achieve more and more material happiness by getting a long duration of life and the paraphernalia for sense enjoyment. But the attached persons do not know that even if one goes to the highest planet, Brahma Loka, destruction exists there also. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that one can even go to the Brahma Loka, but still he will find the pangs of birth, death, disease, and old age. Only by approaching the Lord's abode, the Vaikuntha Loka, does one not take birth again in the material world. The Grihamedes, or materialistic persons, however, do not like to use this advantage. Hmm. They would prefer to transmigrate perpetually from one body to another or from one planet to another. 
They do not want the eternal blissful life and knowledge in the kingdom of God. You can hear the uh, mm, pirates. parrots. Why do I need pirates? Mm, interesting. Mm. Okay, mm. so... um. <coughs> interesting point that you know uh, at least what I understood from what Prabhupada is stating here is that the you know anywhere in this material world is suffering even if you go up to the topmost planet of course Lord Brahma's suffering is greatly reduced compared to ours and the residents of that planet because they're all comprised primarily of intelligence and and high level of goodness so suffering is very small and enjoyment is quite high but still, eventually there's death. Um, so, so there's a level of suffering. You know still you're eventually going to die. But the point is to get out of this cycle of birth and death. And uh, Bhagavad Gita explains that we should do that and tells us how we can do that. The thing is that those who are, are materially attached, they're not interested in that kind of solution. They'd rather... Um, transmigrate body after body after body continuously trying to enjoy the material energy rather than give it up and just go back to the spiritual world where they can enjoy eternally like that mm -hmm. that's yes. my understanding yeah because yeah the key point being like you say they want to enjoy mm -hmm. and sometimes isn't it you said before devotees when they they said previously they hesitated to take to the process or they understood what it meant when they took a, a step closer hmm. you know you kind of know I'm going to have to hmm. negate or not negate but give up certain things or it's the end of this type of enjoyment you surrender know? yeah yeah <laughs> <coughs> the biggest word surrender right next paragraph there are two kinds of dissolutions. One dissolution takes place at the end of the life of Brahma. At that time, all the planetary systems, including the heavenly systems, are dissolved in water and enter into the body of Gabodaksha Vishnu, who lies on the Gabodaka Ocean, on the bed of serpents called Shesha. In the other dissolution, which occurs at the end of Brahma's day, all the lower planetary systems are destroyed. When Lord Brahma rises after his night, these lower planetary systems are again created. The statement in Bhagavad Gita that persons who worship the demigods have lost their intelligence is confirmed in this verse. These less intelligent persons do not know that even if they are promoted to the heavenly planets at the time of dissolution, they themselves, the demigods and all their planets will be annihilated. They have no information that eternal blissful life can be attained. Mm. Sad. <laughs> it's sad what a lack of knowledge can deny you. Mm. Well put. Yeah. Okay, text five. Those who are intelligent and are pure and are of purified consciousness are completely satisfied in Krishna consciousness freed from the modes of material nature. They do not act for sense gratification. Rather, since they are situated in their own occupational duties, they act as one is expected to act. I think I'd like to read that again because it didn't really make much sense. Those who are intelligent and are pu and purify consciousness are completely satisfied in Krishna consciousness. Okay, that does make sense. <laughs> Freed from the modes of material nature, they do not act for sense gratification. Correct. Rather, they are situated in their own occupational duties and they act as one is expected to act. I think it was all the act, act, act towards the end that got me a little bewildered. Yeah, so someone who's in pure knowledge, they, are, they for one, they're in Krishna consciousness, so they, they act, they perform their duty for the service of Krishna. And that's the way that they're, what we're expected to do, because that is actually natural. <clears throat> unnatural, which David Rita Marge's book, Living in Unnatural Happiness, means that, yeah, we live in an unnatural state of trying to enjoy the material world, and we wonder why we're suffering, but that's because it's not natural. <laughs> it's unnatural. But natural happiness is when we perform our duties for the pleasure of Krishna. Let's see what Srila Prabhupada has to say. 
The first class example of this type of man is Arjuna. Arjuna was a Kshatriya and his occupational duty was to fight. Generally, kings fight to extend their kingdom, which they rule for sense gratification. But as far as Arjuna is concerned, he declined to fight for his own sense gratification. He said that although he could get a kingdom by fighting with his relatives, he did not want to fight with them. But when he was ordered by Krishna and convinced by the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita that his duty was to satisfy Krishna, then he fought. Thus he fought not for his sense gratification, but for the satisfaction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yes, yeah, so this is a wonderful example of <clears throat> a person who had a certain nature, inclination, duty, and um, he became sentimental about performing that duty and you know you could say he had good arguments why why one shouldn't yeah. fight yeah. with your relatives <laughs> but then if Krishna says no that's what I want and it's for a higher purpose then of course you need to do it now this yeah. isn't a sign that a it's good to fight with your relatives <laughs> and that's that's religion fighting mm -hmm. no I fight with my relatives so that's religion no mm -hmm. uh, that's not it's only religion if Krishna deems it necessary for you to do that mm -hmm. and for Arjuna who was a warrior um, he was kind of in one sense you could say the chosen one who was meant to completely undermine his brother Duryodhan who was a deceitful sort of wretch of a person and was trying to unsurp the entire kingdom and uh, so therefore Arjuna was actually selected to be the person to undo it. Otherwise we should be very careful about fighting with our family. As Arjuna makes good points about that in the Gita and elsewhere he quotes Dharma Shastra that in general we don't fight with our relatives so unless Krishna is on your chariot instructing you then try not to fight with your relatives. <laughs> I'm going to wind you up. Yeah. Well, that's true. I'm, and that's why I was saying all this. Because for sure there's plenty of good reason to want to do that. Right, <coughs> <coughs> next paragraph. Persons who work at their prescribed duties, not for sense gratification, but for gratification of the Supreme Lord, are called Nishanga, free from the influence of the modes of material nature. Niyasta Kamana indicates that the results of the activities are given to the Supreme Person to refer to. Such persons appear to be acting on the platform of their respective duties, but such activities are not performed for personal sense gratification, rather they are performed for the Supreme Person. Such devotees are called Prasanta, which means completely satisfied. Shuddha Chetusa means Krishna conscious. Their consciousness has become purified. In unpurified consciousness, one thinks of himself as the Lord of the universe. But in purified consciousness, one thinks himself the eternal servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Putting oneself in that position of eternal servitude, servitorship to the Supreme Lord and working for him perpetually, one becomes completely satisfied as long as one works for his personal sense gratification. He will always be full of... Oh, did I just... Oh, sorry, that's the end of the sentence. <laughs> Putting oneself in that position of eternal servitorship to the Swim Lord and working for him perpetually, one becomes one actually becomes completely satisfied. Next sentence. As long as one works for his personal sense gratification, he will always be full of anxiety. That is the difference between ordinary consciousness and Krishna consciousness. <laughs> I'm not sure if that guy's Krishna conscious or not, but he's, yeah, he's certainly not arguing with his family, but he certainly is making a lot of noise. <laughs> but, <clears throat> okay. Makes you feel like you're in India. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I think I gave this example before, like when I was working. Well, when I graduated, when I was going to start work, it was like serious mental breakdown how am I going to because when you're a student at least you've got a lot of time in your hands <laughs> you can do a lot of sadhana and I was I was going to the temple a lot and doing a lot of service and that in, when I was I mean I was I wasn't skipping class just as a side point but anyway she would never skip a class that no. would be completely adharmic and her whole world would melt <laughs> down if she broke those rules <laughs> I enjoyed it 
but um, when yeah, before I started working, I was thinking, how am I going to connect this to Krishna consciousness, and what does it mean? And it's interesting because I went through a major thing with that, and subsequently over the years, when I was like with devotees and mentoring and otherwise, it's actually interesting. It's like the same crisis that a lot of people go through, and it's nice to share. And it was, and my point was, first of all, I was serving. Like so, my point was, I'm going to work because you have a sense of duty after work you you know you make money i was giving regular um, donations to the temple i was doing what i could i was doing a lot of work (laughs) service and i remember just thinking oh don't could you pushing my skirts off (laughs) i remember leaving the office one time in holborn feeling really satisfied in my heart but i was leaving the office to go to the temple hmm. and I was feeling really genuinely satisfied oh, what is this and, I, and I'm not saying this in a way oh my god I was like some big paramahamsa I'm not saying that I'm just saying it was like some connection that because you are dovetailing what you're doing and using what you can and like this in Krishna service and the fruits of your work whatever money whatever in Krishna service it really felt connected there was no it wasn't like that is there and that is there. The whole thing was one. Mm. It was really interesting. It was really, I remember that. I was looking out and thinking, oh, yeah, really. So just in mind, just the point is, um, the reason I said that is because it's saying here, you know, just put working for Krishna, putting him in the center. And it says one actually becomes completely satisfied. Mm. And yes, you can. You can be. You can. As opposed to the other way where you're always feeling excited, which is also true. Yeah, because you're always fighting to earn more, fighting yeah. to climb the ladder, fighting with the boss, fighting with colleagues. Yeah. You're, is you're not really happy doing what you're doing. You know, your so motive, your whole consciousness, your whole, yeah, your life, as it were, you know, is not, yeah, it's about the temporary, like you said, the, in, you know, fighting for this, that. Yeah, it's really interesting. Okay, so I think we'll stop there. Okay. Not sure how long it's been, but it's around about the right time. So it's a little bite. And uh, keep tuning in. We're going to keep trying to do some readings around the manor, weather permitting. It is (laughs) pretty cold, but uh, it's so beautiful. Such a beautiful day. We had to come out and and try our luck. Oh, that man's coming in. Nice to be with all of you. Please like, (laughs) comment, subscribe, and share. And, uh, yeah, and come visit the manor if and or when you get the chance. Yes, please do. You might see us. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting on the lawn. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Bhagavatam ki jai. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. jai.